why do we even worry about boundaries when it comes to masturbation right. and, and sex addiction in the first place? Which, you know, and I have my thought, but I'm, I, let me toss that out as a question to you two first. Why do we even care? Why do we even care? Um, so this is, so um, it's, I think the biggest piece, the first piece is, is it secret or not? Yeah. So I think the, a lot of the problems happen when there's um, secret sexual activity, whether it's with another person um, or by, by yourself. Um, and so we get, and so what I hear a lot from my clients is, well, this is something that I do privately. I've done this all my life. And so um, why would I share that with my wife or my girlfriend that I'm, that I'm doing this? Why would I do that? And, and the answer is because she doesn't know it's happening. And uh, does it then lead to less sexual intimacy with a partner if there is, um, do I, I don't know, guys, does it have to be chronic masturbation? Can it be any kind of masturbation that then interferes with sexual intimacy with a partner? My clients tend to, I mean, we're dealing with sexual compulsivity. So problematic sexual behavior of some kind. Most, in most cases, masturbation was a part of some of someone's sexual history. And again, I think we should, we should name also, we're not, we're not trying to say in this, in any of this, that masturbation is wrong or bad, or we're not trying to moralize it or come up. We're just going to have a conversation on this. So, but typically with our clients, it's led to problems for them of some kind. Um, in the, the 12 step phrase, it's led to some kind of pitiful, incomprehensible demoralization for them or consequences in their, their relationship, like you said, Wendy. So it could be sexual or, you know, I don't like the term, but sexual performance issues, you know, that yeah. there may be some kind of, uh, you know, maybe led to ED or, or lowered, you know, th their, their sexual response is affected. For me, when I'm thinking about my clients in masturbation, and I, I use, I look at this primarily at early in their recovery. My default is let's pull masturbation off the table. And I do that because when I'm thinking about, well, twofold. One, it's been my experience that clients that continue to masturbate where pornography or uh, affairs or, or acting out sexually was a, was a part of their addiction, that when masturbation stays in the mix, they have a harder time staying sober. And the reason that that happens is because when we're doing work uh, around sobriety from sex addiction, the what we're actually trying to do is neurologically reprogram in their brain so that those addictive neural pathways aren't the prominent ones and they're developing healthy neural pathways. And when somebody who's got an addictive neural pathway going on in their brain is masturbating and especially masturbating and going into fantasy, which I'll circle back to that later when we talk about what healthy self-pleasuring self or masturbation looks like. Um, but when they're masturbating and going into fantasy, they're stimulating those addiction neural pot pathways, which is getting in the way of and hampering the neurological healing of their brain, which is reinforcing the addictive patterns, which is getting in the way of the sobriety and the recovery, which is the reason that they're coming to see me in the first place. That was a mouthful, but you know, that that's why I care. But I will also say I've had some clients where masturbation was never an issue for them. It wasn't really right. a part of their addiction. Mm -hmm.